Why are Filipinos so good at singing and performing? We're going to break it down. Andrew, we're going to give you a few years. Maybe you are going to sing or try to be a Jabbawocky. But if it fails, you have to become a nurse and learn how to jab a body. That's the rules. <laughs> hey, guys, we're about to play this clip from the 26th season premiere of The Voice featuring Filipino singer Sofro Neo Vasquez. That's just the latest 2024 example, Andrew, of something that all the Asians and starting to be the rest of the world have known for many decades. Yeah. Hey. Filipinos are good at singing, or at least they sing a lot, but actually we all know some very good Filipino singers. In fact, I swear almost every other month there's a Filipino singer that goes viral from the Philippines. Let's play some clips. Uh, David, this question has been Googled and wondered on the internet for some years now. Even non-Asians have started to ask, why are Filipinos so good at singing? Everybody has seen a Filipino dancer, at least a Filipino DJ. So I guess we're going to get into the reasons, the actual reasons why Filipinos might be so good at singing. Right, so make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, check out Smala Sauce on Amazon.com. Let's just check out some of the initial reactions from Instagram. When it comes to being nurses and singers, Filipinos are gods. <laughs> Filipino karaoke is like 1980s Mike Tyson. When a Filipino comes on stage for a singing competition, man, I am telling you, they are not joking. But then some Filipinos came through and said, I'm in the 1% of Filipino that can't sing. Oh my goodness, I can't dance or play basketball either. My Filipino card should be revoked. Oh no! Nah, uh, uh, here's some other things from the internet, Andrew. Filipinos are known for singing, nurses, dancing, basketball, DJing, break dancing, good fashion sense, being charismatic, being friendly and warm, pork, eating pork, religious, being religious, hospitable, and warm. Yeah. And here's the interesting thing is, out of all those stereotypes, Andrew, would you say that Chinese are only known for two of those similar things, basketball and eating pork? <laughs> Maybe. I, this video is not about comparing Chinese people to Filipinos, all right? This one, this video is about Filipino people and why they have such a strong singing culture. All right, reason number one, Andrew, there is a focus in Filipino culture on live performance, specifically at family parties or gatherings. Oh my gosh, so this is huge because over a lifetime, uh, when you're a Filipino kid, and we have a lot of Filipino friends, obviously, and but like they grow up just singing a lot at their at their family parties and at base at their day booze or whatever the backyard boogies are. And I'm just saying like, basically if you're a kid in a family and you end up being gifted and know how to sing, people are going to know right away because yeah. you're going to be put on by the family right away. You're going to be discovered by your auntie or your mom and be like, Oh, you are such a good singer. Why don't you get up there and sing? And then, you know, everybody's just going to, yeah, I, I would say a lot of my friends growing up, the older ones that can speak Tagalog, they mostly learn Tagalog through singing songs in the native Filipino dialects. Oh. Like that was their uh, incentive. I mean, karaoke guys, we all know. I mean, maybe karaoke might be a Japanese word, but I'm pretty sure the Filipinos dominate. So, so there was this company in the Philippines called Magic Mike and it's transitioned over the years to get more and more advanced in the iterations to be called Magic Sing. Mm. And I think the key is, I heard that you have to be locked in because people will judge kids versus other kids. It's not just like, oh, go up and just do whatever you got. It's like, you better bring it. Oh, you're saying that when Filipinos do karaoke, it is taken seriously. It's not like just some, oh, like yes. everybody's a winner. Thank you for participating. It's like, 
It, Who's going to be the best? You know, interestingly enough, Filipinos are the only people that I want to go to KTV uh, NRB karaoke with okay, because they take fair. it serious that's and fair. they'll turn the echo down. Other Asians, you might get some emotional outbursts, but it's not necessarily uh, sonically going to be at the same level. Hey, as the maybe Filipinos. the reason why I don't really like going to karaoke is because it's always other like Chinese or Korean people, but maybe we go with Filipinos. I'm going to like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's going to be fire. Uh, number two, there's a deep musical culture that stretches back to even the pre-colonial history. Yeah, so if you look at history, like even the pre-colonial era, like in uh, the indigenous uh, tribes of the Philippines, they have a long singing culture of storytelling and telling histories. And every celebration is very much about singing. I mean, this is what... Even the Spanish said when they got to the Philippines is what they noticed, right? Right, right, right. So they were already singing before the Spanish came, by the way. So it doesn't have but anything to do with But then the Spanish brought a whole bunch of new instruments and uh, their own European, like, Spain style. And then they mixed with that as well. Right. And then not to mention, guys, when Catholicism hit the Philippines, then you have all these religious hymns that people got to sing. So when people are converting to Catholicism and they're in the church, I mean, what's a way to even gain... I'm not saying this is why, but I'm saying if you want to be part of the church and you want to gain grace or you want to be involved in the church, one of the best ways is to devote your talents to it so you're going to be in the choir. Right. And then, of course, uh, once the Spanish influence sort of faded away and a ton of American influence came in. Right. And the American influence, it really allowed a pathway for there to be a lot of Filipino singers for other Westerners and like America. So yeah. basically when you bring in jazz or pop music at the time, whether it was like in the early 1950s or 60s or whatever that was, then all these Filipino bands are going to pop up because now they see that pathway. And maybe part of the incentive, I don't know if this is true, but if Filipinos are like, well, I want to go to America. Yeah. How should I go? I can sing. Boom, you're already entertaining all the American military. You can get you know, maybe go travel or something like that. And then now you've got Filipino American artists or even ones that are crossover like Easy Mills, Sharice, uh, Manila Gray, Pilo. But and remember even that uh provincial rap battle where he's like duk, duk, bak, duk, duk. <laughs> That's fire. Yo, that no, I mean we and, gotta we're gonna get to the expressiveness. And I, and I feel like Bebo, that song by Apple to App was kind of like a mixture of like all the levels that we're talking about, pre-colonial to Spanish mm. to American to you know what I mean? Yeah. Like a hybrid of all three. Yeah. And, and like you said, uh in, in Mongolia, that throat singing finally got transitioned into something uh universally, globally plat uh palatable through the who. Right. But but ultimately like I, I think when you think of like Mongolians or other Asian countries that have a deep singing culture, like uh, they were singing in China, of course, but it's not like the deep tribal singing culture, right? And like you Mongol mean from thousands of years ago. Yeah, and Mongolians have that oh, 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 thing, but that's not as pop and westernized, right? And, right, and right, it didn't well, have that pathway to transition, you know, your talents into pop music. Well, right? I think they're more trying now, but you're right. There wasn't any like organic, large scale movement. Mm -hmm. Point number three, Andrew, there's a focus on emotional expression. Mm. And that's probably like the biggest difference in my opinion between Filipinos and like, for example, East Asia, where East Asia is famous, I guess, archetypically for like emotional repression. Mm. They're focusing on expression. And there's actually an ancient uh, concept called hugot, hugot. I'm sorry for mispronouncing it wrong. It's in Tagalog. And it's basically about expressing deep feelings in the heart by using different phrases and and I'm going to try to say one of the phrases right now. Mahal mosia, pero mahal kabania, which means you love them, but do they love you back? Mm, so I think, and I think obviously like initially some people are going to credit like the Spanish for that because it's like a telenovela, you know, like a drama, like a Spanish, uh, what is it? Day, daytime drama. Right. But interestingly enough, telenovelas come from Latin America, but also colonized by Spain. And then it creates the Spanosphere. Right. right. But I would suspect that, you know, even back in the pre-colonial era, you know, of the tribes and stuff, it's, it's a lot of like expressing yourself too. You know, I mean, there's, there's that. Right. Right. Um, uh, the telenovelas that were super popular in the Philippines in the 1990s were Marimar and Maria La del barrio yeah and now interestingly enough k-dramas and k-pop are super popular yeah i mean so that that's like another wave of influence yeah. cultural influence yeah that's true i mean if you guys think about your filipino friends i mean would you ever describe any of them as like monotone or expressionless or cold 
That is not, those are not stereotypical terms that you would use to describe Filipino people. There are way more other people in the world that I would use those terms to describe stereotypically. Possibly the Chinese Filipinos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. (laughs) maybe, All right, but point number four, I'm kidding, guys. Number four, natural talent due to genetics, they may have a larger vocal range and be less monotone, whether that is due to nature or nurture. So there is even some theories about warmer, more tropical climates affecting the vocal cords. Hey, well, I'll tell you this. All these viral videos of these dudes doing karaoke outside, like they're just like on the beach and the sandals or maybe not on a beach, but they're just outside the, the, the shop with the sandals and they're just singing because if the air is warm, I guess it keeps your vocal cords warm. And over time, Andrew, maybe you're you... talking about Tito Creed. <laughs> Let's run the clip. Boom. Hey, listen, guys. I don't know. You know, here, I also want to play this video, Andrew, real quick. This is Kobe doing Filipino stick dancing when he was 19 years old, just about to enter the NBA in Manila. See, that is why we love Kobe. Point A, man. That, that's a good video. Yeah. He's, he's in it. Uh, point number five, Andrew, family support. So this is an interesting point because I know that Filipino family support for the arts, it does, it, it might be more than other Asians, but it's still not all the way like a Western family. Yeah. I mean, listen, I think that probably Filipino families, they're at least more supportive of it as a big hobby. I mean, if someone's good at singing and they can sing for the talent shows and sing at work or sing, somehow have it benefit their life and and sing at church or whatever. I mean, I think that is super, super supported. Um, I do think that uh, probably Filipino families are more okay with their kids entering entertainment. Um, but I do think, no, like I said earlier, where they're like, hey, listen, if you did not make it big like Sharice or Jabawaki's with the Vegas yeah. residency, I'm going to need you to look into some other options. You have like three-year timeline. Um, number six, international success makes it easier to accept for the parents because there have been a f- uh, quite a few people, whether they're mixed Filipino or full Filipino, that have gone on to have global success and made millions of dollars. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're talking about who? Bruno Mars, Cherise, Black Eyed Peas, Apple to App. And, and Taboo. And Taboo's yeah. half. Joe Coy in the comedy lane, DJ Qbert, Arnel Panita. I mean, he's saying, Andrew, he's saying the, the, what? The lonely girl just anywhere. That... That's a Filipino, half Filipino guy. Uh, Leia Salonga was one mm. of the original uh, people who emerged, I guess, like from the Disney sort of like Broadway theater world. But oh yeah, like, you mean she voiced but, a lot of uh, the musicals? Yeah, got rich and became more mainstream, even though that's like its own like I guess niche world. Yes. And um, some people are saying that it's just due to the situations, uh, the socioeconomic situation in the Philippines. It's viewed as a great way to get out of uh, the dire the situation that you may be born into. Right, 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 yeah. And that's similar to hip hop. It's similar to bolero singers in Latin America as well. It's a pathway out of your circumstances, depending on what you were born into. Although, to be fair, I do know that some of the singers are from more prestigious backgrounds as well too, like uh, Enrique Iglesias. His mom was part of the Filipino aristocracy. Mm. Uh, Number seven, diverse influences. Mm. I think that this is key here. Filipinos, they feel like 25% Asian, 25% 25% Spanish, 25% American, and 25% they could pick themselves. Uh, I mean, definitely, like, I feel like all the Filipino kids that I knew growing up, it's like they're so adaptable. Like, I know the whitewashed Filipinos. I know the blackwash. I know the Filipinos in the hood that are just with everybody. I know the Filipinos that get mistaken and pretty much become Hispanic. Bro, they could be all cousins, yeah, too. Then like, hanging out, get, getting dollar hits together. Yeah, and not to mention there's the Filipinos who lean more into the anime, maybe the East Asian culture or whatever. So I think that... And then obviously there's a, a range of looks of Filipinos. You have the Chinois, which are more the Chinese Filipinos. You have the Pinoys. You have Ilocanos. Everybody like you the see white Spanish looking people. You right see here. the mestizos, whatever you see the you see the whole 
range. I mean, dude, you got Michelle Malkin, Andrew. She was the original Asian conservative commentator. You've got Pilo, who really became one of the most successful art uh, hip hop artists outside of the Bay, more modern hyphy movement, I guess, in the Bay Area in the past like decade. And then you've got uh, Jacob Balaton, uh, who was uh, in Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, and he's like kind of like everybody, he's like a mix of everything, man. So I, I guess, David, to wrap this up, and everybody let us know in the comments down below if we're missing any reasons. You let us know what are some, yeah, some other reasons that Filipinos might be so good at singing. We're not saying every single Filipino person can sing, and don't feel bad if you can't sing, but I think we can all agree that they have a higher percentage of singers than other Asians. For sure. I mean, if you look at these culture maps, there's no like one standardized way of looking at culture, but culture is often made of this, Andrew, greater community knowledge and stories, language, tradition and rituals, technique and skills, tools and objects, the arts, food and drink, values, religion, working schedule, child rearing methods, food, manners, jokes, clothes and dressing, patterns of behaving, patterns of conversation, patterns of thinking. These are all the things that ultimately comprise different um, pie slices of an entire pie of culture. Yep. So it goes to show you, man, I think it's uh, it's a great question because, like we said, if you search on YouTube, you search on TikTok, any sort of social media platform, there is a Filipino with anywhere from like 10 to 100 million views on them crushing a song. Yeah, and they're not just any songs, guys. We're talking about vocalist songs. We're talking about Mariah Carey and Whitney Houston. In fact, I would say those are some of the most viral videos are Filipino people singing Whitney Houston. Which, obviously, uh, is super hard to sing. So, anyways, guys, uh, let us know in the comments down below. Shout out to all our Filipino friends. Shout out to the Philippines, anybody watching this. But uh, you guys know what we're saying. This is a stereotype, but it's based in some truth. Because everybody knows a Filipino person involved in music somehow. I, I, I'll say this. Uh, this is just more of a, like a personal note. I always thought it was cool the way Filipinos invent basketball moves. Like the Pinoy step. Mm. Like, I was like, man, if you, if you got a name named after the way your culture plays basketball. That is cool. Oh, they, they got some very interesting basketball games out there. Anyways, that went viral. So, anyways, leave it in the comments down below. Uh, check out Smala Sauce at smalasauce.com or Amazon. Oh, let us know in the comments section below if there's any other, like, I guess, observations or patterns that you notice amongst any other Asians that you want us to break down. And by the way, also sign up for my premium uh, Asian guy course in the email section below. I got a newsletter. I got some big plans out in Asia. It's going to be really cool. Anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Until next time, we're the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.